What's up guys, welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're hopping back on the Razer SX500 project, which I finally got running just last week, but unfortunately it broke immediately. The moment that I tried to lay the power down, the threads on the inside of the rear wheel pretty much stripped out on the wheel. The sprocket pretty much spun in place since then. And we really gotta do something about this because I am super curious to see how fast this bike actually goes and to see if there's any changes we need to do with the setup. I also need a win this week because I've been a little bit sad about my other bikes. I unfortunately bricked the computer on my Roar Mantis X already, which is not even two weeks old, which is completely my fault, by the way, for downloading their app and connecting to the bike to potentially make some changes. But I didn't realize that it is not fully developed to be compatible with the Mantis X or the new Mantis Mini quite yet. It's gonna be compatible in a couple weeks once they do a couple updates. But luckily, Roar's got a very good customer support team and they're actually gonna help fix my computer, which is on the way to California right now. So this bike's only gonna be down for about a week or so. And my Telaria Triple X is just feeling a little bit clapped out recently. The fork is just completely shot at this point from riding on some rough terrain the last couple weeks. And the brakes are also completely shot. So we've just got some work to do here. So here's a problem that I'm having right now. The whole sprocket assembly and the free wheel are just spinning in place on the hub of the wheel itself. So it's not a, it's not exactly a free wheel issue. It's the whole threads on the wheel itself that's completely stripped out. I think there was a little bit of some confusion on my previous video regarding the issue here, but the free wheel is welded, but now I need to get it welded to the hub of the wheel. Luckily, my buddy David, who happens to live in the same neighborhood, offered to help fix this and weld the free wheel onto the hub of the wheel. So let's go take this off and prep it to get welded. I probably should have put the bike on a stand. So here's a closer look at what the problem is. So my free wheel is in fact welded already. That's not what the problem is. It's the threads on the wheel itself. As you can see closer, the threads are completely stripped out on the wheel. So what I'm hoping we can do is screw this in as much as possible, as flat as possible. And then I'm gonna have my buddy weld it on the outside and tack weld on the inside. Just gonna clean and prep it as much as I can. And then I'm gonna let him take over. Just threw on a couple tack welds on the front side and a couple beads on the back side. We'll clean it up some more later, but I just want to see if this works. Fucking over. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous to take this out since last time I attempted to take it out, it fully stripped out the free wheel. So I actually have no idea how fast this thing actually goes. Though, due to the gearing that I have installed on it, I have a suspicion that it's gonna cap off around 50 miles an hour. Not because of the power, but simply because of the gearing. Got David out on the Polaria Triple X. It's 
see what it does. So just as I suspected, it just it just hit the top speed pretty quickly and it stayed there since the rear sprocket is just simply too big to take full advantage of this. So I'm gonna swap out the rear sprocket to get a higher top speed. Let's give this another run. You ready? I'm ready for more, so we are going to swap out the gearing because I want nothing less than 65 miles an hour. What did you get up to? 55. It's the gearing that's the limitation. Because yeah. it hits 55, then it just pretty much just sits there immediately. So I got to swap out to a smaller rear sprocket, but I couldn't get a shot of the Speedo because I can't stand straight up. Right. I have to lean forward to keep it down. And drivability wise, it's actually surprisingly smooth. The stock Polaria throttle works pretty well with this far driver. So I've been doing some calculations and I'm thinking that we might be able to hit our target speed if we switch out the current 71 tooth rear sprocket with a 56 tooth. So let's go put one on. The split sprocket adapter that I'm using is by CM Tech. And then I just got my 56 tooth split sprocket from Cart Supply on Amazon. If you're interested in checking out any of the items that we're using for today's project, I'll have everything linked in the description below. Yeah, it's got a nice, fresh, anodized finish on there. Yeah, it's gonna be a huge difference in sprocket size. So you may have noticed that I didn't put the chain on this time around. That's because I'm actually gonna resize this chain. I think it's actually gonna be too long for this sprocket since obviously it's a lot smaller than the last one that we had on there. So we may have to take away maybe two inches of chain. So far, I've been pretty impressed with the power from the EC4P motor. So we'll see how this speed run goes, but I may be considering switching out the rotor and shaft on my EC4P for the one. So maybe we can put out even more power in the near future. Yeah, I'm just gonna shorten the chain by four links and then that should give us the right amount of range. Then we'll just adjust the tension accordingly with the axle blocks. Now I'm just gonna slide the axle blocks on both sides bit by bit with these adjustment bolts. And then we're gonna torque down the rear axle and lock these in place. I just want to check one more thing before we take this out. Just want to make a few small changes. Max phase current, 350. Kind of nervous that it's freaking wet outside. Should I do this? <laughs> Oh no. All right guys, I'm too sketch. I shouldn't do this, right? No? All right guys, screw it.
Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to cut it off because it is way too sketchy riding 59 miles an hour in the rain. Okay, so that last run didn't go quite as planned. That was a lot of heavy rain, so I couldn't really do much more than half throttle. I didn't feel comfortable going faster than 59 miles an hour, but it has been a few hours since we got drenched. Hopefully the streets are dry enough. We're gonna give this one last final shot. Give this a run. Oh, okay, so that was hundred fifty max line current. Uh, that actually wasn't max power. Oh. That was only 63 miles an hour. You want to go again? Yeah, I'm going to do one more pass. Right, guys we finally hit it i've always said that when i started this build i wanted to build a razor that goes at least 65 miles an hour and we just hit 66 miles an hour on that third pass <laughs> bro i didn't quite do 70 yeah. but i passed you going 66 Jeez. which i'm very happy with on a little walmart razor <laughs> yeah i'm definitely gonna need to upgrade the brakes on this thing asap all right guys, we finally did it. We went over 65 miles an hour, which is the original goal for this Razor SX500 project. My hands are actually still shaking because I'm just not used to going that fast in such a small bike like this, especially with some mountain bike brakes, which I definitely need to upgrade ASAP. I'm looking at Electro & Co's Extreme Brake Kit. Let me know if you guys have experience with that or if you have any other suggestions. Speaking of which, you can now get 5% off anything on Electro & Co's website using discount code PADOUTDOORS5, so make sure you check them out. Shout out to David for making it possible for us to take this thing out by welding the freewheel onto the hub. But we are far from done from finishing this bike. I've still got some cleaning up to do. I wanna put the side covers back on, add some lighting, do a custom graphic set, maybe raise the bike a little bit with a longer DNM rear shock. Let me know if you guys have any specific suggestions, but if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with some of my projects, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.